Okay, we are on li live now. So how's everybody today? This is my second uh, attempt. <laughs> Hope this one it works. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? Okay, we are on I live now. So how's everybody today? This is my kiss. Okay, I think this is working. Okay, let me just tweet this so that everybody knows we're live. Nobody's missing this. Okay, so where are you in the world today? Kenya, Kenya, Nigeria, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa. Cool. Ghana. All right, everyone. So today we're going to go through, um, you know, like a few different exercises. Um, first, we're going to focus on the basics of dynamic allocation with malloc. And then we'll go through a little bit more advanced data structure, the linked list um, that you guys should be looking at right now. Like probably you have done like two projects on linked list if you're in cohort eight and you probably should be started malloc or like have done malloc if you're in cohort nine. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So right now I'm showing the, the concept page about automatic and dynamic allocation. Do you want guys to go through that or do we, should we jump, uh, directly to like the basics, uh, the basic tasks, for instance, or, or should we go through like this page to run through the concept and re-explain this, uh, live? What do you prefer? Exercises or concept? We'll go through a task in any case, but like, what do you want to start with? No preference? You guys have read this page? Okay, you want to go through the concept? Let's go. Let's do that. Okay, so the first thing, remember, the first thing you need to do when you have a task or a project or whatever you need to do in life is to understand all the requirements and go there and like, if it's, you know, if it, if you need to read something, just read it. It's very important. 
because like you're gonna have some like key information there that you're gonna need to um, you know apply to the task. You know the way the program has been built is that everything is project based, and the goal is for you to learn how to learn uh, to be able to take on any task uh, in the future. So this is in the con uh, in the context of learning software engineering, of course, but like all the the tools, all the mindset, uh, the habits that you're gonna learn. Uh, are going to be applicable in life also. Um, so you have a problem set, you have those tasks and like, you know, there's some requirements and some, and one of the requirements is for you to understand, you know, like some of the tools that you're going to need, right? And one of those is going to be malloc. And malloc has to do with dynamic allocation. So first of all, um, we've seen in the previous live sessions that when you declare variables inside a function, um, you know, the, the computer, uh, the OS is taking everything, is taking care of everything for you memory wise. So when you declare a variable, it uh, saves enough space for this variable to hold the value that it needs to hold. Uh, when you uh, exit the function, you know, this space is freed back to the OS, back to the program to be used later on. Uh, but in some instances, you don't know exactly how much memory you're going to need. And this is going to depend on the inputs, on certain type of inputs. Could be from the user, from a file, from a database. Um, but let's just say you need to load a dictionary, for instance, in order to look up some words. Then you're going to open some type of file and you're going to load like part of it, all of it or part of it into the memory. But you have no idea how big the file is, right? So you cannot say, hey, I need to, I need to save that amount of space in memory. You're going to know this only at runtime, after you compile, after you have written your program. You have no idea how much space you're going to need. And this is when you're going to need to um, do the allocation yourself. Uh, and that's what's called like uh, dynamic allocation versus automatic allocation, which is done by the computer when you use variables. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, the reason why we have, we have those, those things. It means also that once you use certain space in memory, you're going to also have to free it back to the OS, back to the program, so that it can use more memory or that chunk of memory later on. Okay, so everything the computer does, now you need to do it yourself. That's pretty cool, actually. So that's what basically I, <laughs> you know, I wrote here. Um, so automatic allocation. So if you look at, you know, this small program, you know, when you declare these functions, C is fun. Uh, then, you know, in memory, you're going to have N1, N2, unsigned integer on a 64-bit machine is going to be four bytes. So you're going to see N1 here, N2 here. Those values are going to be set when the function is called. And then you declare some variables, integer, a char, a pointer to an integer, an array of char. And then the computer allocates the memory automatically. Okay. And then when you exit the function, all this uh, memory that it had allocated for this call of the function is going to be freed and you can reuse it uh, later on. Okay. Any question about this? Like the high level concept of automatic versus dynamic. We're going to go through like, you know, like very detailed examples and like how the memory is used, you know, when we go through the, the task, just like we did in the past two um, previous sessions. But at this point, um, given everything we went through during the past uh, live sessions, you should be able to understand what is uh, the automatic allocation and how it works in memory, right? All good. All Okay, good. Okay, so... There is a special case for the strings uh, because like a literal, a string literal, so this is a string that is in double quote, um, is actually stored in a special place in memory. And we're not going to go into the, the specific details, like I don't want to go into a rabbit hole, <laughs> but uh, just know that this, those strings are not uh, automatically allocated. They are like there in the program. They are inside the program already, and they're not. And they're not moving. And the reality is that they're also like in a segment that you can access 
You can read them, but you cannot modify them. I think we talked about this uh, in the previous session already. But not going into the rabbit hole of, of this. Um, and now let's do, let's go straight to malloc. So malloc is a function that allocates a specific number of bytes in memory and returns a pointer to be uh, to the allocated memory. And this memory will have read and write permission. It means that this memory can do whatever you want with them. You can read it, but you can modify it also. Okay. So let's just say that you still want to load uh, in in memory, uh, you know, like your dictionary. You're gonna be to you're gonna be able to say, hey, like I have a, a new word. I'm gonna allocate space for this word and then write this word into the memory. If it wouldn't, if it wasn't. Um, uh, writable, you couldn't do anything with the memory really, so it has to be uh, it has to be writable. And because you guys are using malloc, of course you have gone through at least the basics of it via the the, the man page, right? So man malloc. So this is a function. And as you can see, it comes with like some friends. So the, the friends of malloc is free because once you allocate the memory, then you have to free it at one point. And then there's like some vi variation of the malloc uh, function, c alloc, realloc, realloc array. Uh, we're not going to go into the details right away, but essentially, you know, the description is something that you should read all the time for the functions that you read. So get into the habit of getting into reading the manual. Sometimes it's like huge manual, like for instance, you've used, you know, GCC, you've used, uh, you know, SH. These are like big, big, big mans. So you don't want to read everything necessarily, but the description, the prototype, the description, uh, and some key, um, some key uh, paragraphs are important. So the return value is also important, okay? so. If you know nothing about malloc, then you type man malloc, you see the prototype, so you know it's going to return a pointer, right, to the allocated memory, and then it takes a size, okay? The description is the same as what we just read, but essentially the malloc function allocates size, bytes, and returns a pointer to the allocated memory. The memory is not initialized, okay? Just like when you automatically allocate the memory with the computer by declaring variables, you don't know what's there. Could be zeros, but it could be something else, especially if you had mallocked and freed uh, the space already. Um, if the size is zero, then malloc returns either null or a unique pointer value that can later be successful pass to free. Okay. Um, and then tuk, tuk, tuk. Return value is also very important. That's something you want to read all the time. So the malloc and cialloc functions return a pointer to the allocated memory that we knew already, uh, which is suitably aligned for any built-in type. On error, these functions return null. Null may be also returned by a successful call to malloc with the size of zero, or any successful call to cialloc with memb or size equals to zero. So that's very important because now it means that you need to check the return value of malloc. It's not going to work all the time. Okay, so can someone give me an example where malloc for sure is going to fail? Anyone? Nobody? Not enough memory, yes. So, Morara, not enough memory uh, is is basically, you know, what it's... Uh, it's not enough memory in space. Yes, Ben. So, when you try to allocate too much memory or there's no more memory left, then malloc is going to fail, 
Okay. So for instance, if you try to allocate in a, in a loop, uh, you know, like infinite loop, you try to allocate, then, you know, at one point it's going to return null because you're going to have, you know, taken all the available memory that you can uh, use right now. Okay. And then it's going to, so Abdullah, it's not because it fails. So it's because it's fails that it returns a null pointer, not the other way around. Okay. Okay, so now that we know the basics, let's go back to the concept. Page. Um, and then here you have an example of a very uh, standard way to use malloc. So you want to allocate a, enough space for the string OK. So since OK is two letters, but every string uh, is marked by the backslash zero at the end in C, you're going to need like three letters. Each letter on a 64-bit machine is one byte, so you're going to need three bytes. So you're going to allocate three bytes of memory. Okay, and then you're going to put the O into the first uh, byte, the K into the second byte, the backslash zero into the third byte. When you print it, it's going to print OK. Here, one important note is the usage of size of. Okay, so we know that a char on a 64 bit machine is going to be one byte. So, why do we need to use size of char when we already know the size? You know, like if we want to have like a, a, um, an array of three integers, we can just say, okay, on a 64 bit machine, it's like four bytes long. And so, like we just say four times three four bytes times three times integers, then it's 12, right? So why do you think we need the, the to use size of? Anyone? Any idea? So that it's not fixed and suits the OS. Flexibility in case the machine is not 64 bytes to accurately capture the amount of memory needed. Size of data types might be different from machine to machine. Yes, exactly, Omar. So depending on your architecture, your OS, um, like you don't know for sure what is going to be um, the size of each of the type that you're going to use when your program is going to be compiled. You don't know where it's going to be compiled, right? So we do this for portability issues. Because if you, if you put like only, uh, if you use like the size in bytes on your machine, it's going to work on your machine, on every machine that is exactly the same, but it might fail in other machines. Okay, if it's like a 32 bit machine, if it's like a 16 bit machine, if like tomorrow it's like a 128 bit machine, um, and so on and so forth, right? So it's very good to get into the habit of writing your program as if you know you don't know where it's going to compile, and then it's going to work everywhere, right? So portability issues. So this is another example with integers, right? So here we're doing the same thing instead of for a char, it's an integer, instead of a char, it's an integer, right? So we have an array of three integers. Um, so we do like size of an integer times three. Okay. What's interesting here is that we're using the viable name instead of the type. So you can use size of with both. Either you pass the type or you pass you pass a variable and then the computer is going to deduct the type of it. And since tab is a pointer, it's since tab is a pointer to an int, it knows that when you dereference tab with star tab, then it points to an int, then this is an int. So it's like this, it's the same as writing size of int 
times the number of ints you want. In this case, three. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay, I don't see any question. Let's move on. Um, so as I told you before, in terms of automatic allocation, the computer does the cleaning for you in memory. But in terms of dynamic allocation, when you're using malloc and their friends, um, you have to do the cleaning yourself. Okay, otherwise, when you leave the function, then, you know, the, uh, the memory is still uh, marked as used and so you cannot reuse it later on so it's very important that at the end of your program you should have freed everything that you don't need anymore and at the end of each function you should free uh, everything that you don't need anymore right so as soon as possible actually uh, in most of the case as soon as possible you want to free the space that you're not using anymore okay so here in this function uh, that's basically what I'm showing you, right? So here I have, I'm calling M with three integers. And here we're going to have a mix between automatic and dynamic allocation. So here, for instance, I have N0, N1, and N2 that are going to be in memory. In this case, uh, it's going to be... Wait, you don't see everything that I see. Yes, n is going to be n0, n1, n2 at the address 20, 24, 28. It's going to be uh, automatically um, allocated and also assigned at the same time because these are the values that you're calling the function with, okay? Then you are declaring a pointer to an int called t. This is automatically allocated by the computer, by the program, and then T is here. Since it's a pointer on a 64 bit machine, it takes, you know, eight bytes in memory. And then at this stage, the value is unknown, right? And then you have another one, int sum, this type, this is an integer, and we did put it here. And those are completely random, you know, numbers in memory, you will never see actually like a, a memory address of one uh, for a variable that is allocated, but it doesn't matter in our example, right? I want you to focus on, you know, the, the principles, not the details yet. We're not there yet. Just mentioning that it's not exactly like this, but just like, just like a T, sum is automatically allocated, four bytes in memory because it's an integer, at this point, uh, sum is unknown, okay? At this point of the program. And then you're calling malloc. And so T is going to receive uh, a pointer to the space allocated by malloc. So first malloc allocates a space in memory. How much space size of um, star T T being a pointer to an integer, star T, when you dereference T, you're going into the address of an integer. So size of star T is the same as size of int. Size of int on a 64-bit machine is going to be 4. And since you want three uh, integers uh, to be stored at that space, 4 times 3, 12. And so that's what... That's what you're going to see here. So here you have at the address 40, which is again, like it's completely random. And actually it's like not exactly next to the allocated, uh, the automatically allocated memory. It's, it's far away, but it doesn't matter again. In our example, it doesn't matter. But this type of, this memory has been allocated by you. You know, that's why I put it in a different color. So T is going to receive the address of the first byte of this space in memory. Again, like 12 bytes. 
And then we're going to say t0 equals n0, t1 equals n1, t2 equals n2, and sum equals like the sum of those three. And then you have the memory exactly like this um, in, in your virtual memory. Okay? But when you leave the function, all the automatic uh, allocation is automatically deallocated. So you can reuse the space at, at 1, at 20, at 24, at 28, at 32. But the, the memory in space that starts at 40, which was returned by, which was the address returned by malloc, which was a space that was allocated by malloc, it's still there in memory marked as used. Okay? And since you've lost the pointer to this address, there's no way for you to free it. And then you have like unused, uh, you know, you have like memory that you haven't freed for the rest of the life of your program. If this is like 12 bytes in memory, it's not a big deal, you can say. But really it is because most of the time when your program like is getting bigger and bigger, if you, if you forget like a lot of them, especially when it's going to be in loops or your function is called like many, many times, thousands of times, hundreds of thousands of times, then you get to crash your program. Make sense? So... Project to code, you're saying, I thought it is why we malloc instead of dynamic allocation. The dynamic allocation is made via malloc. Malloc is the tool to do that. So project to code, another one is, if malloc is going to assign memory at compiling time, why are we saying times three? So we're, we're saying times three. Let me go back to the example. So here we're saying times three because we need three integers to be stored in the array. Okay, so that's why we're saying time three. But malloc is allocating memory dynamically. So not at the compiling time, at the running time, when you run your program, not when you compile it. Does that make sense? Okay, so then the best friend of malloc is free. So as we said, in case of, you know, when you use malloc, you have to clean uh, the memory yourself. So you have to do the cleaning, okay? Like the computer is not going to do it for you. Or like when it's going to crash, it's like it's going to, it's going to clean everything, but then you don't want your program to crash. Uh, <clears throat> so whenever you malloc, you want to free, okay? And this is, an, <laughs> this, is a, this is an example of what the OS is going to do if you try to alloc too, ma too, many, too much space with your program without using free at any point. Basically, it's going to, kill the program. So how do you use uh, free? It's very easy. Going back to our previous example, once you have mallocked, uh, you know, enough space for your usage, you, you, you want to store the, the memory address where the, the malloc has allocated the space. So the memory address of the allocated space that you have allocated yourself with malloc. And once you don't, you don't need it anymore, you want to free it. So you pass this address to free. And then free is going to clean up. Very easy, very simple, right? You want some space in memory, you ask malloc to do it. You say, hey malloc, I want like this amount of bytes. It gives you the address of this amount of bytes that you can use. Okay, you're not allowed to use more, right? Uh, and then once you don't need this, this uh, chunk of memory again, uh, anymore, sorry, then you give it to free, you pass the address to free of this block, and then free is going to uh, do the cleaning for you.
there's I don't seem to get the practical life application of this malloc stuff. <laughs> so malloc is going to be used whenever um, uh, you're going to get some of the some information at runtime, and you have no idea how big is going to be this information. Okay, so I was giving you know like the example of like you want to. Uh, you know, find the definition of a word in a dictionary. You have to load the dictionary. You have no idea how many words, how many pages, how many character that you need to load into the memory, for instance, right? So one thing that you're going to, going to need is to allocate memory while you're running the program. Does that make sense? Omar is asking, when do you free in your main and or your function itself? Is it the question is where you mean? So you can you can free it whenever it you know wherever it makes sense and whenever it makes sense. Okay? So you can free it from the main function if you want to. And you could do that by modifying the prototype of the M function. Instead of returning nothing, you can return the pointer to or the address of you know the, the the allocated memory, and then in in main you can free it, or you can do it from m. So here, since like main does not need this pointer, you just want to free it uh, in in the function that you know allocated this memory already. Do you have to use malloc whenever you are writing a code? No, if if the if you know exactly what you're going to need in terms of space, you don't need to use malloc. You can just declare the variable. For instance, if you know in the dictionary there is like a thousand words, you know, and those words like are maximum like ten character long, then you can just like declare a, like a big array because you know exactly how much space you need. Not exactly, but you know uh, the maximum. A space you need. When do we typecast malloc to return pointer to the address? So the casting. So, oh, okay. So malloc returns uh, in the manual. It says it returns a pointer to void. Void meaning like no type really. Okay. And in this case, it means like any type. So when you do t equals malloc, malloc returns like any type of pointer and so it's going to be casted in whatever the variable type is okay you don't need to like in some examples uh, you're going to see on the web you're going to have the cast before the before the assignment so you're going to have like t equals um, you know parent into parentheses int star malloc etc you don't need to do that it's done automatically this way. Why did you use size of uh, star t and not size of int? It's a good question, Prince. You could use size of int if you want to, if you wanted to. Size of star t is a little bit more uh, flexible because if you change the the type of t later on, then you don't have to change um, the 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 type in the size of inside the malloc. But you can do both. Honestly, like it's it's not a big deal. If you write a code without allocating memory, what happens in the code? Is a memory automatically assigned? Yes. Yeah, so, for instance, in in this case, uh, in the M function, you have five uh, variables that are automatically assigned. You have not done anything. You have not asked, you know, explicitly the computer to allocate memory and then you're gonna free them, right? Those five variables have been or will be automatically um, allocated at runtime by the computer. Wow, so many questions. What? Uh, when available memory in the heap does not shoot the amount of memory uh, requested by malloc. Um, not sure what the question is, guy. Since we use malloc, when we don't know how much space is needed, why do we still declare the exact amount of memory space when declaring malloc? It's a good question, Joshua. 
It's because here we're going through simple uh, a simple exercise, okay? Just to for you to understand how MATLAB works. But later on, you're gonna we're gonna assign like um, we're gonna work on linked lists, and you know we're gonna add only when we need we're gonna add like more memory, okay? But it's it's a great question within this context. It makes a lot of sense that you're asking this question. But in real life, we're gonna use MATLAB when we don't know the amount of space. In case of the dictionary example you are using, how do we now get the size in order to use malloc to allocate the space? Okay, so in, in the example of the dictionary, okay, um, you're going to read the file. So let's just imagine that the format is just words. You know, it's word of, uh, it's just word. So, and it's like, it's organized by line. So you're going to get like one line from the file, Okay, and then for this line, you're gonna allocate enough memory to put the uh, the words and the definition together inside a structure. So you need to allocate the structure, then you need to allocate space for the word, and you need to allocate space for the description. Okay, and then you go to the next line, and then you allocate again with malloc, and then you go to the next line, but you have no idea how many lines you have. So there's no way for you to declare an array. You have to go at runtime, go through all the lines, and allocate each line one one uh, one at a time. There's like other ways to do this, but essentially like this is like the the basic algorithm to load this into the memory. Wouldn't the size of starty equals eight bytes being a pointer compared to size of int, which equals four bytes? All for a 64-bit machine. Question from Erica. So an integer is four bytes in memory, and a pointer is eight bytes in memory. But t is the pointer. So if you put size of t, then it equals eight bytes. T is the pointer. When you dereference t, you go get uh, the type this pointer points to. Okay. So in this case, t is a pointer to an int. So when you dereference t. You get the you get the value of the in the of the integer it points to. So start e is an integer. So as a consequence, size of start e is four. Does it make sense? Lots of great questions. Uh, I like to read that project to code cool. Now I this I understand malloc. Great. Okay, let's do an exercise. Okay. Uh, what should we go? What should we do? Let's do like the 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 first one, like the easiest one. Write a function that creates an array of chars and initializes it with a specific character. Okay. So create an array. It's going to take an uh, unsigned int size and a specific character. And then we're going to return a pointer to the array. Okay. So I'm going to create an array of char. So I'm going to reserve space in memory. So it makes sense that I return a pointer to the first character, which is the first byte of the allocated memory. Okay. So let's go briefly to the whiteboard. And today, hopefully, you're going to see my whiteboard. So they are like the the reason why it didn't work last time is because uh, Microsoft has like some DRM uh, features, and like would prevent me from uh, sharing my whiteboard with you guys. Okay, so we're gonna get basically we're gonna get a number of bytes. Really like a number of chars, but like this is like one byte. 
and then we're gonna get uh, a C, which is a char that we want to put in like all the memory space that we have allocated. Okay, so let's go through an example. If I am called with 10 and C, then I want to reserve a space of 10 character in memory, right? But I want to then put C everywhere. And then I want to return the address of the first byte. Okay? Pretty simple so far. Okay, so now that we understand this, let's get to the next step into whiteboarding. So I have my function create array. I call it with let's say 10 and then F. Okay. So first I want to allocate the memory. So I'm probably going to use malloc and I want to allocate enough space to hold 10 character. So I'm using size of, right? So size of a char times this 10. And this is going to return the pointer to the first byte of this chunk of memory. So at this stage, I have reserved space in memory 10 times the size of a char, since it's a 64-bit machine, then it's going to be 10 times 1, 1 times 10. And so like I have like 10 bytes for my array. Okay. And PTR is going to be a pointer to a char. The first byte being a char. Right? So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Once I have this, I'm going to use this pointer to put f here and then in order to put f here i'm going to need this pointer to move from here to here once i do this then i do that then i move to the next one then i move to the next one i do the same etc then i move to the next one and when do i know i'm done here i need to stop right otherwise i i might crash the program because malloc reserve like that amount of space and not more. So I can't go here. No, no, no. So when do we know that we have, we are done with initializing the array? Anyone? When do I know that I have done initializing my array? Um, okay, so I have two answers. The first one is when the counter is less than 10. The other one is like when it hits backslash zero. And earlier someone was asking, when is it required to add a plus one on malloc for the null byte backslash zero? Okay. Pointer meets the null terminator. Okay. So in this case, I want to allocate an array of char. I don't want to allocate a string. Okay. So if this is not a string, it doesn't have to end with backslash zero. I want an array of string of, of char. So it doesn't have to end at backslash zero. 
okay? So in this case, it means two things. You do not need to add a plus one here. This is not needed because you know exactly how many how many character you, you need. It's 10 because it's an array of 10 chars, okay? So you want, once you have initialized, uh, once you have allocated the, the necessary amount of memory, then you want to walk through this memory one char at a time and set it to F, the character F. And so you know that since it gonna, it's gonna have 10 chars, and this number is gonna, store, is gonna be stored in a, in a variable, then you can use this variable to go through a loop to do it n times. So if n equals 10, you know you're gonna do it 10 times. If n equals five, you know you're just gonna to need to do it five times, okay? So we're gonna use n in a loop. So we're gonna use a loop and you know we're gonna compare n to something, you know, with a comparison sign. Ah. Comp. And then we're gonna do PTR equals PTR plus one to move it to the next one, one, one byte at a time, one char at a time, right? And for, and for every char that we point to, we want to set it to, we want to set it to, F. Okay. So we're going to use the viable size exactly. Does it make sense? We're going to we're going to go through uh, um, an example of malloc, uh, you know, to work with strings. And you're gonna see the difference and why we're doing the plus one and, and how we use the backslash zero in that case. Okay, but for here, we don't need to do that. Here, it's an array. Okay. All right, so I think we're ready to code. We have everything we need, right? Oh no, we have like one thing that we need to do. At the end, the function needs to return um, the pointer to the first byte, right? But at the end, our pointer is right here or right here, depending on like what's the algorithm. It's not pointing here anymore. So we're gonna need to save this address in another pointer and initialize this pointer to this address. We're not gonna use it and then we can return it when we end the function because it's still gonna to point to the first byte. Okay, so now we're ready. Let's go to our favorite editor, which should be Emacs, right? Who's on team Emacs and who's on team VI here? Very important question. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm going to create the main file. create file for the function which should be zero create array let's see and this is the prototype Okay. 
Oh, wow, Team VI is here today. So are you guys using VI because like it's impossible to exit the program and that's why you know you stuck with it? No, I'm joking. All right. So let's do exactly what we just um, you know uh, brainstorm on the whiteboard. So the first thing is we need a variable that is going to hold um, the address of the allocated memory, and this is the same address that we're going to return from this function. Okay. So we're going to call it. PTR and it's going to be of type pointer to char. Okay. So PTR, we're going to allocate memory and we want size of char. We could do size of C also, right? And then we want size. Okay. Now that we have the that we have allocated the memory and malloc has returned the pointer to the first byte of this memory, we can man manipulate it. Okay? But we said that okay, let's just manipulate it. So while something, we know we want to go through each character and set it to the char C. So PTR equals C. PTR equals C and then PTR equals PTR plus one. So here what I'm doing is that I'm setting uh, what's at the address PTR to C, which is the character that was passed to my function. Okay, so I'm initializing one by one all of them. Explain size of C shortcut. So here, as we said earlier, we can put the type or we can put the variable. And then it's going to be the same because the variable has a type and the type of the variable is going to be used. So you can use either C, which is the variable passed here, right? Of type char. Same result. So C alloc or malloc? Malloc. Right now we are only... Uh, we can only use malloc. Shouldn't be a multiplication side. Yes, it should be. <laughs> Thank you, have you done? Okay, so I'm going to do this. I want to do this size times, right? So I can you I can say while size is greater than zero, I need to do this. And every time I do it, I need to do it one less time. Okay? Why are you not declaring and initializing the variable PTR in one line? You can do that, but I like to separate things. Declaration first, and then you, you, you use those uh, variables. You can do it at the same time. I just find it like more clear to separate everything. Okay? So if I do this, normally I should have uh, done everything, right? So let's go through an example just to make sure that this is working properly. So I'm going to... Hop. So let's pause here and let's go back to the whiteboard. Where's my whiteboard here? Okay, so this is my function, okay, and let's just go through the example where size equals 3 and C equals E, like Emacs, <laughs> okay, so I go here, PTR is going to be the address of size of char 1 times size 3. Okay, so it's going to point somewhere in memory where I have 3 bytes of memory I can use, I'm allowed to use. Okay, and then I say while size greater than 0, P 
PTR equals C. C is E, so I'm going to put E here, right? And then PTR equals PTR plus 1. So now PTR points here. Size now equals 2. Size minus minus. Or we can say size equals size minus 1 if you want to. It's the same, okay? But I'm going back to my while loop. Size is still greater than 0. So I'm going to do it again. So here I'm going to put E. I'm going to move my pointer here. And now size equals 1. Size is still greater than 0. I'm going to put E here. I'm going to move my pointer here. And I'm going to do size minus minus. So size now equals 0. Now size is not greater than 0 anymore. So I, I uh, exit my while loop and I continue my program, my function here. Okay. So it seems to work. Okay. Now the problem is that now I need to return my pointer. And I have lost it because I want to point to the first byte of memory, the initial one here. So as we said earlier, we're just going to save PTR to another variable to make sure we can return the first byte of memory. Okay, make sense? So let's go back to the terminal. Now what we need to do is have a saved PTR. And before we move PTR and change it, we're going to save it into the saved variable. So now saved is going to be the address of the first byte in memory of my array. So the address of my array. And so I can return it. OK. Can you use memset instead of a while loop? Yes, you can. But at this stage, you're not allowed to use it. So you have to think instead of using like stuff that do it, do everything for you. Um, you want to reduce the size 10? I'm not sure I understand the question. Why are we using size minus minus? So we're using size as a counter to uh, initialize the memory. You know, like when you have like, because like that's the goal of the function, right? That's the requirement. So you want to initialize the, in the entire memory to the char C passed uh, to create array. You know that you want to have, if you have like a size of 10, you want to do it 10 times. If you have a size of five, you want to do it five times. So you, we're using size uh, in order to count the number of times we do it. Instead of saying, oh, we're going to start at zero while uh, it's less than size, we're just using size right away and decrement it into, uh, into zero. Is it supposed to be size plus plus? No, because it's not supposed to be size plus plus because our condition here is this one. If you do size plus plus, size is equal, equals five, and like the condition is like you're gonna con you're gonna continue doing you know those three lines as long as size is greater than zero. So if size is five and then you plus one, it's, then it becomes six and seven and never goes to zero. Does it make sense? Can we also say saved equals, oh, okay, I have a question, which is, can we do saved equals PTR? The answer is no, because PTR is going to be a character, which is the character that is at the address PTR. Okay, so these are like two different types, and that's not what you want. You want to save the address. And the address is stored in the pointer. Can we use a for loop as well? Yes, definitely you can use a for loop.
int e loop counter and simply index the PTR and step through the loop using a for loop. Yes, you can do that using a while loop too. We can we can uh, we can do it here. If you want to use a counter and a for loop, then what you're gonna do is you know you want to do it size times, so you're gonna initialize it to zero, right? And you're gonna say while i is less than size, and then you do i plus plus. This is gonna work. If you wanna do the same thing with a for loop, then you're gonna write it this way for i equals zero, and while i is less than size, i plus plus, right? And then you can remove this and this and this, okay? And then you can also say, I don't want a save variable. You can say PTR of i equals c. And that also works. There's like many ways to do this. Many, many ways. You can also say PTR plus i, the reference here. And then here you say you return PTR. Okay, There's, there are many ways to do this. I'm calling on Emacs. <laughs> Can you please clarify the usage of star at the beginning of the functions? This one? So when you have a function, whatever is before the function means that this function is going to return a data of the type whatever is at the beginning, before the name of the function. So in this case, char star is a pointer to a char. So this function create array is going to return something of type pointer to a char. No, the function is not a, point, a pointer. The function is, I mean, in, <laughs> I don't want to get into a rabbit hole, but in this case, it means that it returns uh, something of type pointer to a char. Okay, there's one last thing that we need to do. What did I forget to do? What did I forget to do here? So while you're trying to find out, I'm going to uh, create the header file. But I'm, I missed something. There's something I did not do that is very important. My program is not working properly. What is it? Any idea? Anyone? Return null if malloc fails, yes. So <clears throat> you don't want to free at this point, you don't want to free the memory, okay? Because this function is supposed to be called by somebody who's going to, by a function, who's going to free the memory themselves. You know, if you, if you free the memory and then you return the pointer, you can no longer use this memory because you have freed it, okay? So in this context, at this point of the program, for writing this function, this specific function, you don't need, you don't want. It's not that you don't need, you don't want to free the pointer, you know, the, the memory, okay? But yes, Brian, Omar, uh, Freedom, you want to check if malloc had returned null, because otherwise it's going to crash when I try to use it. So 
it's very important that you check all the time all the return values if this is null then you have a problem and you need to handle it okay and the task says you want to if it fails you want to return null so we just say return null okay Does it make sense? The other thing that uh, um, the task is asking for is that if the size is zero, you want to return null too. So the other thing that you want is that if you want to check that too. if size is zero, you also return null. Okay. You don't have a header file. Yes, I just I just created it, Winnie. But that's that was true too, like a few minutes ago. You're right. So Huang, you're saying like you want to cast the return value of malloc. But so as we, we said earlier, you don't need to, it's gonna be automatically done for you. Can you do uh, exclamation point ptr instead of ptr equals equals null yes totally so man module is asking if i can write this line of this condition this way and the answer is yes why because this is going to be true if the value basically is is other than zero and zero if the value is and false is the value is zero okay if ptr equals zero then the opposite of zero is going to be true okay so you can you can use it this way too but i really like to uh, make sure that you know somebody maybe it's you know an intern who's like discovering my code for the first time I want to make sure that whoever is going to read my codes next to me, like in a year, uh, after me in a year, for instance, like it's going to be very easy for them to understand and to read. So I don't like to use um, shortcuts, but it's pretty cool to do it. Uh, but it's it's a little bit less readable, but it's totally fine. If malloc fails, do you need to read to free the memory? Great question from Omowale. And the answer is no. Like the memory has not been allocated, so you don't want to free it. Okay. In fact, if malloc, malloc fails, you, it's gonna return. It's gonna return null. And if you try to free null, it's not gonna work. What if the return is pointing to int? Asking Omar. When if you if you malloc it, it malloc doesn't really care about what you know. The memory type you you want to use with this um, chunk of memory that it had allocated, so it's it's up to you to use it the way you want. But if it's like an int star ptr, then it's going to be you know integers when you access the memory. How will you return null? Just like return null, just like here. And null is like the val the a pointer with the address zero. If ptr equals equals null, can you return ptr instead of null? Yes, you can, but you don't want to do anything before, right? So you can you can do it this. You can do it this way too, because ptr is null. You return null in this case for sure. So you could do that. I think it's more, it's easier to understand that you want to return null if it's if it's written, but you can do it. Okay, null is a null pointer. It points to the memory address zero, which you can't really use. So whenever you're gonna try to access this memory and try to write, you're gonna crash. So usually it's it's used to um, 
it's used to indicate an error or it's used to say, hey, like this is not initialized or like the end of a linked list, like we said, like we will see a little bit later. Um, but yeah. Okay, let's try to compile and see if it works. The moment of truth. Whoa! It doesn't compile. Okay, so what's missing? In function create, error null is undeclared. Null is defined in the header stdf. Okay. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. STDF. Okay, next one is implicit declaration of function malloc. Aha, uh -huh, we don't have the header for the malloc, for the function malloc. So which header do we need to do to include? You look at the man page and it's stdlib.h. Okay, next one. Oh, it compiles. Does it work? It works. Okay, and we're done. Any question? While I'm waiting for question, I'm gonna repeat every like what I repeat all the time, every time at every live session. I went to my editor, to my terminal, only when I knew exactly what I wanted to write. Okay? So again, you go through the exercise. You try to repeat the exercise and like with some examples to make sure you understand. Okay, if I do this, I need to get that. If I do this, I need to get that. Okay, let's try to find like a lot of different examples. Then you whiteboard it, you know, at the very high level with only words and drawings. And then you pseudocode it. And when you know exactly what you're going to write, then you jump into your terminal and you are editor and, um, and you start writing the code. So essentially you have like, two big things to understand and to work on while you're going through this program or any type of program really like that is about software engineering at the very beginning is like the mindset on how you decompose problem set into smaller ones and how you address, um, you know, like tasks and then how do you translate that into code? You want to separate both so that you can focus on one. Once it's done, then you do the other one. You know, instead of having two problems at once, which make it makes it, 10, 100 times harder maybe, you solve one thing and then the other one. And on the whiteboard thing, you decompose it into like smaller problems too. You know, like, oh, we know we're gonna need a pointer. You know, we're gonna add like, you know, allocate memory. And then I'm gonna move this pointer one by one. Uh, and then like, how do we know we end? You know, like those types of questions, which are very, very basics, uh, basic, uh, it's easy to understand, it's easy to answer, right? So you want to go into like a depth where for you it's easy. And when you're going to get uh, more seniority, more experience, you're not going to have to go that deep. You know, like you're going to see the, the problem, the function, boom, you see it in your head, boom, you go. But for the next few months or years, you're going to need to get into this um, to be able like to grow. And then like a senior software engineer is still going to do this, but at just at a higher level because they have to write like much more complex code. Okay. So, so Guy Francois, I, I think we just uh, went through an example where malloc is returning a pointer to void, which is casted to a pointer to a char and then sets all the bytes to a certain character, right? So I think we just we just done that. Have, so. Bongwe, if you have allocated something using malloc, you have to free it. It's true in any case. So I don't know what you have uh, in your head as a specific example, uh, but like in, in, any, in any case, if you malloc, you free.
Okay, so like everybody that's talking about double pointers, like, uh, but it's it's the same thing. It's the same idea. So you, if you have an array of pointers, for instance, you're gonna have a double pointer to point to the memory. Let's let's go through that with a with a whiteboard, and then we can go to another basic malloc example, but more quickly, so that we can jump on linked list later on. Okay. So I'm first I'm gonna answer this question, and then we go to another exercise. Let's jump back to the whiteboard. So if you need to have, so in this case, for instance, you have a pointer to a pointer, and basically you want to have an array of pointers. Okay, so let's just say here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to have like eight times uh, size of a pointer. In this case, if the pointer to a pointer this case this is an like a pointer to a pointer because it's a pointer to the array of, of pointers then you can do this okay with the malloc then it's going to return this into ptr and then for each of those you're going to malloc for each of those you're going to malloc size of pointer to pointer Okay, and just say it's a integer, pointer to pointer to integer. Then you're gonna do that. And then here in this um, memory address, you're gonna store the, um, you're gonna store the pointer. So you're gonna store the address of what has been uh, saved for you in memory to be used, returned by malloc. And then you move on to the next one and you do the same thing, you move on to the next one, 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 etc. Once you have to free these things, this thing, you want to free first all of the pointers here. Okay, so you go this one, then you move on, you free this one, 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 etc. And once you've done that, you want to free this memory, this specific memory address. Right, and so you're gonna use PTR for the for doing so. Okay. Hey Godwin, no, this is not the first session, I think it's the third one. Okay, makes sense. So let's go through an example of like another example of using malloc. Okay, and then we're gonna to jump to linked list. So, and we said we wanted to do something with strings, okay? So why don't we do string duplicate? Let's do that. We're gonna go a little bit faster so that we can do also linked list because I know like a lot of you like have, have asked for that. So in this case, we wanna write a function that returns a pointer to a newly allocated space in memory, which contains a copy of the string given as a parameter. The prototype is the following. It takes a string as an argument and then returns a pointer to a char. The function returns a pointer to a new string, which is a duplicate of the string passed as an argument. Memory for the new string is obtained with malloc and can be freed with free. Returns null if string is null. And on success, the function returns a pointer to the duplicate eight string and returns null if insufficient memory was available. Okay. And we have a cool example here. So I have this. I pass LXSE. And then I print it. And then I can free it without problem. Okay. So I need to basically duplicate, duplicate my string. So let's go through an example to make sure we understand properly everything. So let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, so 
I have I lost the pointer of my whiteboard. Sorry, guys. No. Okay. So I have str dub. I want a string. Let's just say hello. And what I want to do is I have this string hello. I want to create a new string, copy it, and then return the address of this string, okay? So the pointer is going to be of type pointer to a char, right? It's going to point to the first char of the string. So the first thing I need to do is allocate memory with malloc. So in this case, I know that I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five times a character plus the backslash zero because I know the string is ending with backslash zero. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. So six. So six times the size of a char. Okay. And then I'm going to copy the string char by char, okay? So the first thing that we need to ask ourselves is, how do I find this number? It's not given to me, right? The only thing that I get is a pointer to a char. So how do we know how big, uh, how big the string is? The n, with us having only a pointer to the first character, we're gonna have to count the number of character that this string is. So the way we do this is we're going to create a function that give us the length of the string. Okay, and basically if we have hello, we have the pointer to the first one. And so we're going to move this pointer char by char until we hit the backslash zero. Makes sense? And once we've done that, we have stored the number of char and we're gonna return it. And we're gonna get the six here. Okay? And then to copy the string char by char, We have the string hello in our example with backslash zero and we have reserve space somewhere else in memory. Okay. And so we have a pointer to this, we have a pointer to that. And so we're going to copy the H here. Then we're going to move this pointer to the next one and move this pointer to the next one and copy this here. Then we're going to move the pointer here to the next one and so on and so forth. How do we know we need to end the copy? We know because we just hit the backslash zero. Or because we have the size of the string, we know because we just did this size plus one, len plus one times, len one, two, three, four, five, plus one. So you can either use uh, a counter or you can use the fact that we hit the backslash zero. We have two ways of doing so. So we're gonna use the way of, you know, the backslash zero. So as soon as we hit the backslash zero, then we end the copy, okay? So there's gonna be two parts in my function. First, <clears throat> I want the length. I need it to allocate the right amount of memory. And then two, I'm going to copy, okay? <clears throat> and then at the end, I have a copy I can return. Does it make sense? <clears throat> Pretty st straightforward. You could recycle strcpy from a previous test. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> uh, 
Can you do my log size of char times six? <clears throat> you can't do, you can't use the six in your program because you don't know how big the string is going to be. Okay. So if the string is bigger than six, then you're not going to have enough, um, enough space in memory at all. Make sense? Okay. <clears throat> so length. Let's pseudocode length. Okay, it's gonna return an integer, right? Uh don't want that. It's gonna return an integer. Can I delete it with a... No, okay. Let's just restart. <laughs> and... Okay, just our S, okay. So we said in the case of hello, we have a pointer to H, right? This is S. So S contains the address of the first letter of the string, okay? So what we want is we want, a, we want a counter, we can call it len, we initialize it to zero first, and then we do len plus plus while we are moving this pointer letter by letter until we hit the backslash zero, right? So we're gonna do S equal S plus one, if it's not a backslash zero, then we're gonna do len equals len plus one. And we're gonna do this while not backslash zero, okay? And the way to test this is to say while s is not backslash zero, okay? And then at the end, when we hit the backslash zero, then we return len. So let's go through this, just to make sure that this is working. Um, took, took one more depth. Okay. So we need, we said we need length okay we said that we want to initialize it to zero and then we're going to say while s is not backslash zero then we want to do len equals len plus one and s equals s plus one we're going to go to the next one and then we return len so let's do the example of hello. Okay, at this stage, S points here, len equals zero, and then we test. Okay, are we pointing to backslash zero? No, so len equals len plus one, and S equals S plus one. So now, len equals one, and S points to E. Is it backslash zero? No. So now len equals two and s points to l. Is it is it backslash zero? No. So len now is three and s points to the next l. Is it backslash zero? No. So now len is four and s points to zero. Is it backslash zero? No. So len is five and then s points to backslash zero. Is it backslash zero? Yes. So we end the while loop and return len. In this case, it's five. Is hello? Uh, five character long, one, two, three, four, five, yes. Okay, so it seems to work. Okay. So since this is the first step of my function, I want to check that it's working. So I'm gonna write the code only for this part before I jump to the next one. Okay. So let's go to the terminal now. Uh, I'm going to create the main file. So 
right. So this is one main dot C. Okay. This is my function, and then my function should be in str dot dot C. Okay, the prototype is this one. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to, ha to have my length because this is going to be very important to allocate the right amount of memory, right? So the first thing I want to get is I'm going to create a function called length, okay? And this function is only going to tell me how big is my um, string. Okay, so I pass it a pointer to the first char and I'm said I'm going to call it s. I need the length to be stored in a variable. I'm going to initialize it to zero, and then while what's pointed by s is not backslash zero, what I need to do is I'm going to do len equals len plus one and s equals s plus one. Okay, and then I return len. So from here, I'm just going to print my length just to make sure it works. Uh, str and len. Just going to return null for now. Okay, so I need uh, to add this to my header file. Here I'm going to need also stdio because I'm using printf. Okay. Uh, no. Thank you. Okay. So let's try to compile that. We might have some errors because uh, we haven't finished. But normally it should just tell you the string. And like, forget about this, we return, we're returning null all the time, so that's why. But like, what we're interested in is this. So are we doing this the proper way? Like, is it working? So ALX space SE is of length 6. So that's true. Let's try another example just to make sure that uh, it works. Hello, we compile as so it works, okay? No problem here. So we know that the first part of the program is done. So now that we have our uh, number of bytes that we need to um, allocate, we can use malloc with that variable, okay? So let me go to the chat and see if you have questions. Can you use the strlen function from the standard library? Um, if you write a program, you can use it. But here at ALX, you are not allowed to use the standard library. You have to rewrite all the functions yourself. So you have to write it yourself. Okay. So no question. So I'm going to go back to my whiteboard just to make sure I'm on the right track. I have, I'm done with string. 
Now I want to allocate. Where am I? <laughs> now I want to allocate. So I'm going to use malloc to allocate the right amount of memory, right? And then I'm going to copy the strings into the other, into the newly allocated space. So I'm going to malloc. I need length plus one because here I need to also allocate um, space for the for the backslash zero at the end time size of chars. Okay, this is the number of bytes I want to allocate. I need to store this into um, a pointer. So the address that is going to be returned by malloc is going to be stored in the pointer new. And then I'm going to be able to use new uh, to, uh, to copy the string into it. Okay, but first we want to check if malloc failed or not. So if new equals null, because we just saw that when malloc fails, it returns null, we return right away and we don't try to manipulate this string. Otherwise, it's going to crash. Okay, so now we just need to copy the string. Okay. Will we be required to write printf as well? Yes, actually for cohort eight, I think it's next week. You're gonna write printf yourself. It's gonna be pretty cool. It's called eight, no, cohort nine. Cohort eight, you already done that, right? So here I'm using printf only to debug, only to make sure that we are on the right track. Okay, okay, so we know the length of the string. We have allocated enough space in memory. Now we want to copy the string. Let's go back to the whiteboard. And how do we copy everything? We're going to write another function, strcpy. We want to copy the string source into the address destination. So if I have src pointy to hello and I have dest pointing to a space in memory that have enough that has enough bytes to uh, hold the string hello, then I have dest and source pointing at the first byte. So I want to copy h into this. And then I move source to the second one and I move this to the second one and I copy it, etc., etc., until we hit the backslash zero. So essentially, as long as we're not on the backslash zero, while this is not backslash zero, I want to do two things, three things. I want to copy the character pointed by source into dest. Okay, once I'm done that, I want to move my two pointers. Okay, make sense so far? And so if I do this, then once I hit the backslash zero, this is no longer true and so I'm going to I'm going to exit my while loop and I have one more thing to do I need to copy the backslash zero right because I have done I have not done so so if I write it this way then I want to say at the end okay dest equals backslash zero I'm done let's do it and then I return dest. Does it make sense? I have my two pointers. They both point to the first byte in memory. I take what is pointed by, by source, I copy it into dest. Then I move dest, which was here, to the next byte, and I do the same with source. 
I put E here and then L here and then L here and O here. And then we hit the backslash zero, we exit. So we still have to put the backslash zero here. Okay. So let's write the code. And then once we have written it, let's make sure we go back to the whiteboard to make sure that we have, um, that we understand like how everything works step by step once, once again. So we can either create a function or you can also write it right away here. That's possible. Okay, so we can, we can you know, we wrote a function first. We can just write it here if we want to. Okay, so we can say y source is not backslash zero, then dest that's new in our example, new equals src. Then you move new by one byte, and then you move source to the next char, okay? And at the end, dest equal backslash zero, okay? No, it's new. Okay, so let's just make sure that this works step by step. Okay, let's go back to the white balls. And we're going to go through the example um, src points to hello. Okay. New was just allocated, so we have just enough space in memory to put it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, only six. And then new points here. So I do a are we pointing is source pointing to backslash zero? No, so we're going to here, right? So it is different from backslash zero. So this is true. So we go there. So we put we take what's pointed by source and we put it at the address new. So here now new is h. New equals new plus one, so now new points here, and source equals source plus one, so source points here. Is it backslash zero? No, so we copy it. We move the two pointers again. Is it backslash zero? No, so we copy it. We move the two pointers again. Is it backslash zero? No, so we copy it. We move the two pointers again. Is it backslash zero? No, so we copy it. We move the two pointers again. Is it backslash zero? Yes, so we exit the while loop. And then we add the backslash zero at the end of the string new. Okay? So this seems to work. Let me check the chat. Source is not declared, should be str in our case. You're probably right. Let me check. Yes, it's str. Okay, but is the desk not pointing to the last char already? Isn't it the beginning? Isn't it the beginning we return? So freedom, the desk at the end, so the desk, when you malloc, malloc returns the, the address of the first byte of memory it had allocated. So it points to the first character in this case. When we go through the loop, at the end, it points to the la it points to the the character right after the last one that you have copied. The last one that you have copied is the last letter. You still need to copy the backslash zero. So since it points to the end, then you can write it right away, where it points to. Okay.
So now at this stage, I have allocated the right amount of memory. I have copied my string into memory. I need now to return the pointer to my new string. The problem is I have used the variable new to go through my string. So now it points at the end, so you cannot return it. Otherwise, it's going to be an empty string, right? It's just going to point right away to the backslash zero. So one thing you need to do is to store and store or save uh, uh, the address of the first character of your string before you manipulate it. So you're going to have another one. And before you do anything with new, say saved equals new, and then you can return saved. Does it make sense? So Killian, hi Julian, is malloc allocation not supposed to be len times type of char plus one? So you have to multiply the plus one. So that's why it's here, like it's len plus one times size of char. If you do len types, if you do what you've done, let me copy it so that everybody can see. If you do malloc, if you malloc this, you're going to have len type types of char. That's great. Plus one. In this example, it's going to work. But if the type of your variable is not of size one, then it's not going to work. So you need to add one to length and then multiply and not multiply and add one at the end. Okay? Does it make sense? So for instance, if it if you want to have an array of if it's like let's just say like it's two it's two bytes. Okay? If type of its type of char is two bytes and you have a string of uh, length uh, 5. So it's you want to allocate 5 plus 1 6 times 2 12 bytes. If you do len times type of char, so that's 5 times 2, that's 10, plus 1, 11. You're missing one byte. So you want to add 1 to length and then multiply. Can we do the while loop using for loop and use indices to the PTR? Yes, just like we did uh, earlier. We can do that too. No problem. Haven't you saved the address before copying? I did not before, but then I just I just did. <laughs> like two minutes ago. So it's plus plus len, not len plus plus. I don't understand the question at all. Okay. Okay, guys, so if you do not have any more questions, it's been almost two hours, we're gonna move to the, like one or two exercises on the linked list. Okay? So let's see what we can do. Is there like one task in particular that you guys want to review? Or should I just review like one basic task? You want to go through print list? Yes, Omar, let's, you, we, you want to, in our previous example, this is going to be my last uh, answer to the previous. We, 
previous um, task because we really want to move on for those who are waiting for the linked list. But if you do not save before you manipulate the, the pointer, then it's not going to work. That's why you save it before the while loop. And then you use this saved value uh, to return the, the address of the allocated memory, and which is the address of the copied string. OK. So should I go through print list, guys? Or do we want to jump into like a... Like add node, maybe. Any preference? Add note, Peter? <clears throat> OK. I guess you're going to be the only one with me today for, for the link list, Peter. <clears throat> OK, so let's go through add note then. So what does it say? Write a function that adds a new node at the beginning of a list of type list underscore t. Prototype should be add node. It takes a pointer to a pointer to a t list, a char string, and it returns a pointer to a t list. Okay. Uh, the address of the new element on or null if it failed, and then string needs to be duplicated. You are not allo allowed to use st or dup. It's okay because <laughs> we just wrote this function, right? So we're going to be able to use it now. Um, okay. So let's, what is the type list underscore t? Where do I find this? List underscore t. Where is it? It's here. So it's a structure that has a string an, a length and a pointer to the next one, as it should, because it's a linked list, right? So let's go to the whiteboard. See you soon, Omar. Okay, so remember, linked list, it's a, collect, oops, it's a collection of structure that points to the next one. Okay. And you have a marker to say that this is the last node, and most of the time, it's the last node points to null. Okay. So here you have, for each of those structure, you have a string, a length, and a pointer. And that's this pointer that points to the next one. And then to be able to find the first one, you have usually a pointer to the first element of the list. Okay? So in this case, you want to create a new node. So you're gonna be you're gonna have to allocate the memory for this new node, okay, which is gonna be a structure, right? Then you're going to initiate, initialize all the variables into them. This pointer is going to need to point to here. And then you're going to return, and then you're going to need to move this pointer to the new first element, which is the new one. Okay, and this string is going to be a duplicate of a string. So it's going to point to a string. And this is going to be the length of this string. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Okay? Make sense? So linked list only um, cohort eight had done it, had done them. So if you if you're not in cohort eight, you know, and if you don't want to listen to this, you know, like you can go back to your tasks, no problem. Okay. If you want to stay, no problem too. Everybody is uh, welcome to, to stay. 
Okay, so, so basically now what I need to do is first off, I need to allocate space. Okay, what is the size? Do I know the size of this? Yes, this is going to be the size of a T list. Okay, once I'm done that, I need to duplicate the string. Okay, for this element, then I need to put the length into here. And then I need to manipulate this pointer to point to the to the old first one to replace it to be the first one. Okay, and then point to prep first. Okay, once I'm done, I've done that. I need PTR to be updated to my new structure. PTR points to new okay so i basically have like one two three four five steps okay and like for for and, and just so you know guys for every task every function you can come up with different steps different number of steps it doesn't matter it's really like how you see the problem set okay and how you need to go into uh depth so like if you if you go again uh, into this exercise and you don't find exactly five steps, it doesn't matter, right? Just do as many steps as you want. So the first thing I need to code is just allocating the, the, the space. So let's just do that. And then at the same time, we're going to initiate everything. Yeah, so max. So it's probably going to be needed. Hello. Okay, and this one is add node. So add node, wait. Add node should be two add nodes. Let's see. So add node. Let's see. The prototype should be. This one. And we said the first thing we want to do is to create space for the new node. Okay. So this is going to be my new node. I'm going to call it new. And then I'm going to allocate enough space in memory to be able to write everything I need into it. So size of this T. Okay. So the first thing I want to do, make sure you get into this habit. You want to check that this is working. New equals null. Then then you want to return null. Okay. So this is my first step. Any questions so far? Pretty straightforward. Okay, so going back to my whiteboard, the second thing I need to do is I need to duplicate my string. And I hope I can find my, do I have a str on dupe somewhere? I have length here. I have that here, so I'm just I'm not gonna go and do this again. I'm just gonna use those functions. Okay, but I know that I want to use 
no what is, is it string str yes str equals str dub of str okay and the new length is what len len equals str length of str okay does it make sense so far Guys, does it make sense? Okay, I'm gonna take uh, this as a yes. <laughs> so I have duplicated my string, right? I had allocated enough space for the list. I had duplicated my string. I have the length. And now I need to, for this node, to point to the previous first one so that it becomes the first one. Okay? So the address of the previous first one is stored in the pointer that is passed to me. Here it's head. Okay? So the next becomes head, but not like this, right? Because we have the pointer to the pointer. And so we want the pointer to the first node. So we dereference head once. Okay. Why where we pass the pointer to the pointer? It's to be able to modify the pointer. Because now we need to say that head points to this new node. If we were passed only the pointer, we would be able to do this. But once we return, the pointer head would not have changed in the main function. Okay? So that's why we do head. Does it make sense? And so now that's why we do head equals new. And then we return new. Yeah, my father, I know that only the last cohort, I mean cohort eight has done has gone through it. That was the deal. I do one task for the cohort nine and one for the cohort eight. Okay. So going back again through the code. I allocate enough space in memory. Then I copy the string. I get the length and I save it. And then I update my pointer next to point to the first, the old first element of my linked list. And the new first ele element becomes me. So head should point to me, to the new. Does it make sense? Any question? Is it too fast? Is it too easy? Basically, that's the end. We've done everything. Okay. So the only thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that my allocation for the string was successful too. And you remember, if it doesn't work, then we return null. So we need to check here too if new str is not null. Otherwise, we need to return right away.
Okay. What does okay? Let me uh, take some questions. So the question is the following. Does it work? No. Oh, it doesn't work. So what does that mean? Okay, so to explain that to you guys, I'm going to I'm going to use the the memory templates, okay? What was that? Memory templates, okay. So let's just say you have a pointer to the first element of the list that you call head, okay? So head is going to be of type pointer to an element, uh, a structure to a list. Since it's a pointer, it doesn't matter really what it points to. It's going to be eight bytes in memory. Okay, so this is going to be your head. Okay, and its type is pointer to the first element of the list. Okay, and then somewhere, let's just say somewhere in memory, you have your first element, and this is this is it, right? Uh, LM first element of the list, okay. And so the address is uh, twenty, and so the value is going to be twenty, okay. And then let's just say you have the second element of the list here, and it's a uh, it's a linked list of two elements only. Okay, so somewhere here you have, of course, you have a pointer to the second element. So somewhere here you have the value 40 inside the structure. And somewhere here, since this is the second and last, this is value null. Okay? So what we just did is we created a two node long list, okay? So if I go back to my whiteboard, here what we just created is a pointer head that points to my first element, that points to my second element, that points to null because this is the end. Okay, now we want to add a node. So what we said is that in our function, we want to add a node and then you're going to create a new node, make it point here and make head then point here. Okay, so let's go through that example. If I don't have the pointer to head, but I have head right away as a value passed. So let me copy that. And let's go back to the browser. Oops. Oops. Okay. Should be able to see everything. So what we said is that I want to allocate first my new node. So the new node is going to be here. In our example, new node, okay? 
Then, you know, we do the string allocation, we copy the string, we put the length, everything we need. And then we say, okay, the next is the head. If I'm passed only the head in my function, so in my function made, I'm passed the head, right? Let's just say that head is passed as a pointer and not a pointer to a pointer. If head is passed this way, And from main, it looks like something like this. I'm going to do add node with head pass this way. OK. So if I do this, then what happens is that in my main, in my add node function, I'm creating a new variable of type pointer. So it's going to take eight bytes in memory, right? So this is head of type list t star, uh, t list, no, list t. So type pointer to a list t, okay? And this is going to have the value that because I pass it this way, head, I'm going to pass the value of head. The value of head is 20. So here I'm going to have 20 as the value. Okay. Now I do everything and then I say, and then at the end, instead of star head equals new, I say, okay, head equals new because I want head to point to new. New node is at the address 60. So now my variable head inside my add node function points to the new one. Okay, so it's good. So here I had new pointing to the first element. So new here is pointing to 20. And now I want head to point to the new node, which points to the first element, which points to the second element, which points to null. Okay. So before returning my function, my local head variable points to the right element. But look when I'm going to go back to the main function, which has the head um, variable, it hasn't, it had not changed. And so in order to be able to change the variable uh, in main from another function, I'm going to pass the uh, address of this variable. This variable is, of a, is a pointer, but pointers also have addresses, right? So when you're going to do here, you know that you, if you want to manipulate head and change it from another function, you're going to pass the address of this variable. So now, head is of type pointer to a pointer to a structure t list or type t list okay because it's the address of the pointer to the first element of a t list linked list make sense so you have the t list then head is a pointer to the t list so it's a type pointer t list but when you pass it to sorry here it stays this way when you pass it to um, when you pass it to the add node function you pass the address and because you pass the address of a pointer it's a pointer to the pointer right and so now if you want to change head this head because you pass the address the for the value of head in here is not going to be the value of head is going to be the address of head so one okay so now when i'm going to do star head equals new i'm going to point and change what is at the address stored in head head as the value one what's at the address one head i'm changing this value to new so now this value is 60. and so when i'm going to return 
from this function and go back to the main function, this is going to be destroyed because it's automatic allocation, okay? But the main head variable has been changed to point to the new node. Head is now 60, which is the address of the new node. New node points to the previous first element, which is at the address 20. The first element still points to the second old element, which is the address 40. And the last, since the second element is also, now the third element is also like point, uh, the, the, the last one, sorry, it points to null. Okay, so going back to your question, if you wanted to manipulate the first element Uh, that was what one. If you want to manipulate the first element of the list using head passed as um, passed as a. If you want to manipulate the first element of a linked list with the address of the pointer pointing to the first element of the linked list, you first have to dereference this pointer so that it's not the address of the pointer that you want that you want to dereference is the address of the first element. Does it make sense? Okay, some questions. I can see some numbers in the Excel spreadsheet. How did we come about the numbers? So those numbers are completely random. These are the addresses. And for the value, it uses this this example to uh, we're using the, the this example to put the right uh, values. You mean this class has been on for about two hours? This is not a class. This is a live coding session. But I'm trying to help you understand how you should think about problems and answer your questions. Yes, Joshua, this is live. Okay, so Mubarak, what if head points to null? It's a good question. If head points to null, let's see what happens. So I have my head and basically points to null. What does it mean? It means that head equals no. Okay. What does it mean? It means that I don't have a list. Okay. So does it still work if, you know, this is the first element of the list that you want to add? So you allocate memory, same thing. You want to have the string duplicated, same thing. The length, same thing. And then the first, and then the pointer needs to point to the previous first element. Since there is no first element, because head is null, you can't take, you can't do head dash, uh, you can't do the value of n. No, you can't do the value of n. It's still going to work, right? Head is null. You're not differencing anything. So head is null. So this should be null. And then head should be the first element which is the new element so it's still going to work right i still allocate memory i still duplicate the string i still have my length and then my new node next should point to null, to a null, which because head is null, so it works. And then head should be new, and then you return new. So it also works. Why is the new next not equal 
equated to null since it's now the last element in the linked list. So Godwin, in the exercise, we said that we want this to be the third element. We want to add it at the very beginning. If we were to add it at the end, then it's another, it's another story. Okay? So do you have any, any uh, specific questions on linked list? I have 10 more minutes. No more question? Okay. All right, guys. It was a pleasure. And I'll see you uh, next week. I think I'll put a, I'll put a poll on, uh, on Twitter to know what you want to go through. And also, like some people mentioned that um, you'd rather have the sessions a little bit later because some of you are working and then you, you're not able to catch the, the live. So I'm probably going to start around that time, right now that we are ending, uh, for the next session next week. Sounds good? So I'll put a poll on Twitter and I'll see you next week.